clearly i am not a digital artist but i am a graphic designer and i know how to transform this image into a digital art and today i am going to show you how to do that hello and welcome back to the explorian i am dd and here i design in photoshop and share the process with you and along with that we discuss various tools techniques and tips and tricks which will improve your workflow and level up your graphic design game. for today's technique we have to apply a lot of different filters and effects and that too in an orderly fashion for the first time the process seems to be quite complicated and intriguing but don't worry i will try to make it as simple as possible and i'm sure you will not be feeling the same the second time onwards for better understanding i have divided the whole process into six steps which you can find here along with their timestamps if you want you can skip to any part you wish but i would recommend you watch the full process so let's roll let's create our canvas and this time i'll be using a, a three size canvas and just drag and drop the image we are going to use today onto the canvas we are not going for background removal this time as i am going to use the whole image but i'll be making a selection of the main subject here and how do we do that we'll click on the quick selection tool and then click on select subject and let photoshop do the work and by the way, I'll be providing the links of all the images and resources I'll be using today in the description below. We don't have to be very precise here, just a little bit of refining here and there and we are good to go. Then we'll press Ctrl or Command J and a duplicate of the selection is created on a separate layer. We'll turn off the visibility of the layer for now and work with the image. Our image here is already a smart object. If it's not the same in your case, then first convert your image into a smart object because the filters we are going to use are all smart objects and we cannot use it otherwise. And now we can proceed together. We'll start applying the filters. We'll click on image, adjustment, and then click on shadows and highlights. Though this is an adjustment, but here it will act as a smart filter. This window will open and you will see two sliders here bring up the shadow slider to increase the exposure of the shadow areas. The values will be different for different images so you are the best judge, set it up as per your likings and preferences. In case of highlights, it's just the reverse, means it, if you increase the slider, it will lower the exposure of the bright areas, so I'll adjust it just a little and hit OK. And if you are already finding this interesting, please hit the like button and a sub to the channel will be highly appreciable. And now let's move on with our project. Next, we're gonna click on filter here, then go to noise and click on reduce noise. By default, the strength will be zero. We will increase the strength and it will add smoothness to the image. The image will appear a bit blurry, but that is okay. Don't worry about that. You can also adjust the preserve detail slider. And when you are done, hit okay. We'll apply the same filter one more time by going to the filter again and click here on reduce noise. It will have the exact same settings as we applied earlier and without changing anything, we'll click OK. Then we again go to filter and this time click on filter gallery and in the artistic folder here, click on film grain. Let's zoom out a little bit. I'll set the grain to 1 and also intensity 1 and click OK. We'll again apply the reduce noise filter with the same settings and then go to filter again then others and click on high pass. It will add a little bit of sharpness along these lines. You can adjust the radius to increase the sharpness. I'll set it to around 3. And now we'll double click here and change the blend mode to overlay. Now we have to make a copy of the image layer and for that we'll press Ctrl or Command J and then we have to apply two more filters to this copied layer. The first will be oil paint in the stylize here. We'll set the stylization to around 4 and cleanliness to around 1 and leaving rest everything untouched, we'll hit OK. And now for the second filter, we go to filter, then sharpen and click on unsharp mask to add sharpness to the image. Play with the sliders and depending on the looks you want, set the sliders. This will be my final settings. And now change the blend mode of this image layer to overlay. And again, add the oil paint filter three more times with stylization set to around two. We'll again go to filter, then sharpen, and this time click on sharpen edges. Let's rename the layers to avoid confusion. This will be image, and let's call this the oil paint. We'll make a copy of the oil paint layer and rename it as cutout. 
In this layer, we are going to simplify the shapes of the color shades in the image and for that we are going to apply a filter from the filter gallery which is cut out and hence the name of the layer. Here we got three sliders and we'll adjust them to get our desired effects. By the way, I have another of my designing video where I have used this filter and in that I have explained the filter in details. If you want, you can watch that and I'm sure you know where to find it. First slider is the number of levels which will determine the number of color shades in the image. The edge simplicity refers to the edges of the color shades here and bringing up the slider will eliminate the jagged edges along the color shades and then we have the edge fidelity slider. Do you remember we have created a similar effect with a different technique in another of our video? If you remember, comments down below. I am done here and we will apply the same cutout effect one more time. Now we'll again make a copy of the cutout layer and rename it as edges because we are going to add some black lines along the edges here and for that we go to filter again and open the filter gallery and this time we'll click on poster edges here and then adjust the slider. They are pretty self-explanatory and you can adjust it as per your preference. I think the edges here are a little bit darker than we need so we'll select the edge, edges layer and adjust its opacity. I think 75 is good. The edges of the color sheet here are still jagged in some places and we have to make them simpler and smoother. We are not going to apply any filter here rather we'll do it manually and for that we will create a new layer and take the brush tool by pressing the B key which is a shortcut for the brush tool. And now I'm going to switch from my mouse to my graphic tab. It's not that you cannot do it with your mouse but it's much more comfortable doing this kind of a task on a graphic tablet and you can have a lot more control over the movement of the cursor and you can also save a good amount of time. And if you are serious about graphic designing then I definitely recommend you to get one and you can also find a good one without breaking your bank. Let's get back to our task. We'll hold the Alt or Option key and you will notice that the cursor has changed into a color picker and now we'll take the color from the adjacent area and paint like this to smoothen the edges. We'll repeat this process wherever we find it necessary. It will take a little time so have patience and continue doing it. We are not going to touch the subject that we'll do later. Just focus on the background for now. Can you see the difference? We'll rename this layer and now select all these layers by holding the shift key and clicking on the topmost and the bottommost layer and press Ctrl or Command G to group them together and rename the group as background. And now we'll turn back on the visibility of the subject layer and work on that. We have to apply all these filters on our subject layer also. Worried? Don't be. We don't have to do all these steps all over again. Instead, I will show you a cool trick for that. What we'll do is create three more copies of the subject layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J thrice and now we have four subject layers as we had for our background. We'll select the first subject layer and come down to open the filter of the image layer and now hold the Alt or Option key and click and drag the smart filters here and just drop onto the subject layer and all the filters will be automatically applied to the subject layer. Isn't that neat? We'll do the same for this subject layer also, but first let's rename it as oil paint sub and change its blend mode to overlay just as we have the oil paint background layer and repeat the same process of applying the filters. But why there is no changes? It's there but we are unable to see it because we have these subject layers visibility turned on. Now you can see the difference. We'll collapse this and turn on the third subject layer, rename it, apply the filters and change the blend mode just as we did earlier and do the same for the fourth subject layer also. We can do another thing. We'll select all the layers in the sub background folder and press Ctrl or Command E to merge them together in a single layer. 
bring the layer out of the folder and delete the folder. And now we'll work on the subject to smoothen the edges and we'll do that following the same procedure as we did in the case of background. And this is our subject looks like now and I'm sure you can tell the difference. We'll select all the subject layers and convert them into a smart object and why have we done that? Comments down below if you know the answer. And now we'll link the subject and the background layer so that they remain together and now we'll resize them and rotate it slightly towards the left. And in the last step we'll be adding some text and for that we will click on the text tool and click anywhere on the canvas and add the text and double click to edit it. For this I'll be using a font called Shui or Shiwi. I don't know how it is pronounced. It's completely free and available on Google Fonts. I will double click here to open the layer style dialog box and click on strokes here. I will click OK and come back here to change the font color and I will choose the white color in the background and now open the layer style again and adjust the size of the stroke. Position will be outside. You can change the color from here and I will position it like this. I'll add few more text. I'm using a font called Shadow into Light, which is also available on Google Fonts. And this completes the poster for today. I hope you liked it, but we are not going to stop it here. And in our next video, we are going to take it to the